Okay. Hey, Christy. <laughs> hey, Edith. Do you want the worst joke in the world or do you want something vaguely funny? Uh, the worst joke in the world. I knew you would say that. Okay. What is Iron Man's favorite month? What? February. <laughs> because <laughs> F-E is the periodic table signature Ooh, for nice. iron. That's good. You know, it's funny and educational. It's not funny at all, actually. <laughs> you have to explain it. What do you call a pickle doctor? I don't know. A dill pusher. What do you call the pickle that got run over on the highway? I, I, I don't know. Road dill. <laughs> Who is the pickle's favorite artist? D D D Salvador Dilly. Very good! Get out! <laughs> <laughs> If you think you've heard these jokes before, it's because you have. This is The Best of Edith, our tribute to our dear friend, recapping Edith's garden wisdom, wit, and silliness at Upside Down Tulips. Thank you, Edith. And everyone else, please join us in two weeks for an all-new episode. Upside Down. Hi, Christy. Hi, Edith. How are you? <laughs> Good. Welcome, everybody. It's so nice to uh, be back here in the basement and to have you wherever you are. Some of you are in your garden because it's that time of year. That's right. Some of you are in, in uh, Cyprus. <gasps> did we get another Cypriot? We did. So no more Latvian listeners, but we do. Uh, somebody from Cyprus listened to Two episodes. We have them hooked. We have hooked yeah. a Cypriot. I just like saying Cypriot. What yeah, a that's cool a good word. Name. I love that. Damn. Hey, Edith. How's hey. your garden? Well, um, it was a very, very busy week in the garden this week. First of all, uh, I, I had a garden mishap. Oh, oh, I did. Yeah. So, you know, I've been trying to stake my zucchini. Uh huh. So I put a ladder over it and I got all these strings and stuff ready to go to stake it. And it, I don't think it wants to go. So I was over there looking at it, and I leaned a shovel on the ladder, bent down to look for zucchini. The shovel came down, smacked me right on my ear. Oh, no. Christy, I, maybe I'm a little paranoid, but I think the zucchini did it as a matter of oh, revenge. No. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like, get me out of this ladder or it's, something. The zucchini has become self-aware. You know, plants are more self-aware than we think. Yes. Right? I wonder if we could look at that in real slow motion. I wish. And we could we just see one of those big old leaves sneaking yes. out. Knocking over that shovel. Oh, are yeah. you okay? Yeah, but it really, I mean, it really hurt. It was one of those things where you know it's going to hurt for approximately 90 minutes real bad. So you wait it out and you get over it. You know what's in our neighborhood now? Have you heard of... Dog vomit slime mold, also <laughs> called scrambled egg fungus. What? Christy, Christy, it's a real thing. It, it, it's a real thing. It's dog vomit slime mold. So it's, it's not dog vomit. No. It's a type of mold. Yes. Okay. It's a fungus that looks like dog vomit. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is in a garden, right? <laughs> So, should we call this episode Dog Vomit and see how many people listen to it? <laughs> yeah, we could give that a try, you know, or Scrambled Egg Fungus. Either way, it's both very attractive. So, it's totally harmless. Oh, okay. If you have it, it's totally harmless. It's just disconcerting, perhaps. And did you see any in your yard? No. Okay, but I saw it, I saw it on, uh, on a Facebook page for Wheat Ridge Gardeners. Some people have it. So, it's in the hood. That's my own little section called In the Hood. Gotcha. What's okay. happening in our neighborhood? In the because Edith and I just live like three blocks away from each other. Yeah. So I need to keep you informed. You know, of, if I read about something, right? You're going. You know. got Japanese beetles, and then I got them. There you go. You huh? got a hummingbird. A week later, I got them. That's true. I'll let you know if I get any of this slime vomit. Yeah. Okay? And then I'm on next on the list. You will be. I get, you're a good warning system for me. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Christy, neighbor, friend, and podcast host. <laughs> hi. Hi, Edith, neighbor, friend, and podcast host. Yeah, and hi, everybody who's listening. We're pretending you're in this very room, or in the foyer, as we call the little space outside the studio. <laughs> <laughs> A.K.A. 
Christy's basement. Yeah, Christy's basement <laughs> and laundry room. Yep. <laughs> right. That's what we're doing. So if I have to get up in the middle of the podcast yeah. today to, you have go, to go to the bathroom. Well, I have to maybe fold some sheets and do, you know, fold, my, fold some sheets. Fold you think? sheets? In my laundry room. Oh. <laughs> I can't, my mind went back to you putting sheets on your plants. And I thought she's left them up all week. Oh. That's what happened there. Okay. I, I, all right. I, I tell you, it's my mind. I mean, okay, you know what I feel like? I feel like my mind is like an internet browser. 19 tabs are open. Three of them are frozen. And I have no idea where the music is coming from. <laughs> well, uh, I have a kind of a story a kind of a slash garden stealing produce story. You know, the first time I was in Tucson, I couldn't believe everywhere you look, there's grapefruit trees and orange trees. They're everywhere. So um, we were, this is when I was doing comedy and Paul Brown and I, he was the comic I was working with. We were in our townhouse and I looked down and like three houses down, they had a big grapefruit tree in the front, in the front of their yard. And I didn't know them, but I really wanted their grapefruit. So I said to Paul Brown one night, it was about midnight, it was after our show, we'd get home and I'd go, Paul, let's go steal some grapefruit. He goes, <laughs> Edith, no. I go, come on, Paul, get up in the tree. Come on. And I kind of say, as I've seen a grapefruit tree with grapefruit on it, I mean, there are hundreds of it. How There's many? So how many. can you eat that many grapefruit? It's, that's exactly what I was thinking. So I thought, it's also midnight. I go, no one's going to find out. Come on. Look at all these grapefruit. It's did, midnight. Did you dress up all in black with a mask? And... Mm, no, oh, no. Okay. Chris. That's, that's how I envision you doing it. Chris, no. It was with midnight. High, with, thought... with boots, like boots with a real high heel. No, no. But thank you, no. But no, I did not look like Catwoman <laughs> to steal a grapefruit, but that's okay. So there I am. He's finally, I talk him into being up in the tree. And lo and behold... We see these this couple coming down the sidewalk, headed for us. Oh, I'm no. standing there with a bag. He's up in the tree. And sure enough, it's their of tree. Oh, of of course. course it is. I, oh, man. And I'm like, um, and I look up into the tree and I go, here, kitty, 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 kitty. Here. <laughs> <laughs> the couple's like, oh. Is your kitty up in our tree? I go, yeah, but you know what? We'll, I'll, I'll be fine. Thank you for asking. And uh, they went inside, and I'm like, Paul, throw down some grapefruit and let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. You know, Christy, believe it or not, we don't re we don't rehearse this, and we don't have a script. But you just segued me into a story I was going to tell. Yeah. At Beautiful segue. It's a story I call the Upside Down Edith story. <laughs> this happened to me this week. I went to have my car serviced, and it was at the dealer. So, you know, it's this big fancy room with a giant TV. So everyone is in there. They're watching the TV. And in the corner behind them is this gigantic chair. It's an easy chair, like Naga Hyde. Uh -huh. It's a, what do you call it, massage chair. Oh, nice. So I thought... This is the best. So I sat in it, and there was a remote. And I'm playing around with the remote, and it starts bringing my legs up and my head down when I dropped the remote on the ground. And it kept moving. It kept moving until I was literally upside down. Oh, no. I couldn't get out. You were literally upside down. I was literally upside down. I couldn't get, I couldn't ask. It's a pandemic. What am I going to say to people? Yes. Come over here and pull me out of this. Plus, it's too embarrassing to do that. So I kind of rolled over as hard as I could and like tumbled out the side <laughs> of this chair. The torture chair. The torture chair. How many other people have that happened to, I wonder? Well, that explains why nobody was nobody, in this chair. Yes, they all nobody, knew. Nobody. They must have known. Oh. So that's my upside down Edith story. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, let me see. I planted garlic. Oh. The garlic that I dug up. Um, at the beginning of the summer, mm -hmm. and I've been, you know, it curing it. So I planted that. I pulled out the beans, and I harvested my potato. Potato? Potato. Man, here's what happened. So I, ha I had them in this big bucket for the uh -huh. first time, 
and I pushed on the bucket and the dirt came out and I pulled on a plant and I got a ping pong sized (laughs) potato. Ping pong sized. Oh, man. Yeah, nobody wants a potato that's like one mouthful. (laughs) You know, some people do so great with potatoes. I got to say, I never have either. I've grown them in a bunch of places and... um, Well, Christy, maybe, let's be optimistic. Maybe there's some good ones on the bottom. Because I quick righted it again, and I thought, well, it needs more time. And am I right? You didn't do this in the earth, right? Did you do it in a bucket? I did it in a huge, like a tree bucket. Yeah, that's supposed to be better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. It is only October 1st. There it is. It'll be fine probably for another month. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. So that was my week in the garden. One potato, two potato. (laughs) I wish I had two potatoes, but the one (laughs) potato... Do you remember there was the Donnie Marie show in the 1970s? Yes. And they would sing this song called, I'm a little bit country, I'm a little bit rock and roll, to mm-hmm. define how, even though Donnie Marie were very similar, they mm-hmm. were different in these. They were certainly not rock and roll, but okay. <laughs> well, Donnie was a little bit rock and a roll. A little bit. He's had and a little Marie bit. Okay. was a little bit country. Okay. And I decided that that might be appropriate for us, because I think I'm a little bit Martha, uh-huh. and you're a little bit Mother Jones. Oh, you mean Martha Stewart? Yeah, I'm a little bit Martha you Stewart. You are a little bit Martha Stewart. And don't you think you're a little bit Mother Jones? I subscribe to Mother Jones. <laughs> I am totally Mother Jones. Yes. <laughs> so, um, for example, if I if you had to pick, what do you like better, flour or veggies, what would you pick? Veggies. And I would pick flowers. Um, I have a lawn and you? Would never have a lawn. Would never have a lawn. Um, I have ornamental grasses, and you? Do not like ornamental grasses, because you can't eat them. Okay. I call what we plant things in soil, Uh huh. and you call it? What? Dirt. I do, I do call it dirt. Yeah. I don't like the word soil. It reminds, it's like the word moist. Nobody likes those words. Or the That's word true. nummy. Nobody likes those words. You don't like moist, nummy soil? No. <laughs> Do not. I like dirt. (laughs) And you have fruit trees and I don't. Right. Though I kind of wish I did have a fruit tree. That's a major difference right there. Those are some little ways that we're different. Um, I have an award for the best drama tear jerker. That would be the death of my plum tree. Oh, yeah. Look at you. You're so empathetic. That was really sad. That was really sad. And that's all we're going to say about that. Well, you tried so hard to keep it alive. I did. I called the extension. They came out. I went out there. I showed them samples. There's a lot of stuff you can do, folks. If you feel like something in your garden is dying, whatever state you're in, look up your extension, your agricultural extension office. And you know, Edith, you should win an award for that too, because you were like Shirley MacLaine in the end of Terms of Endearment. Oh my God. Oh, oh no. you were just like, you did everything. I did everything. You could I really did. I did everything tree. I could. And then finally, you just like old Yeller, you took care of the tree yourself. You are triggering all of my <laughs> sadness right now. Old movies. Yeller and terms of endearment, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever tell you you're my hero? You're everything I wished I could be. Oh, it's been so long since you've sung a song. That's great. And I could fly higher than an eagle. But now we're going to go to something funny. Why don't we move on to our next pod play? Because you are the wind beneath my wings. <laughs> Hey, I'm the old woman who lived in a shoe. That's right. I got no name and I live in a shoe. You think that would be bad enough, right? (laughs) But on top of that, I got so many children, I don't know what to do. So I gave them some broth and put them to bed. And Child Protective Services comes around and says, Hey, what's with the shoe? And you're just feeding them broth? Where are the vegetables? And I'm like, I live in a shoe. What do you want from me? Kids, go to sleep. It's seven o'clock at night. (sighs) So anyway, old Mother Hubbard, she lives over the hill in a house, a real house, not a shoe, says to me, you know, when my cupboard was bare, I grew a garden full of vegetables. 
I says, what? How do you know how to grow stuff? She says, I listen to this podcast called Upside Down Tulips. They help you. And they have a website and a Facebook page. Whatever those are. Kids, shut up! I'm on my last nerve. So, anyway, I'm going to try growing a garden. <laughs> what do I got to lose? <laughs> Actually, I could lose the kids. They're looking peaked. <sighs> so, I'll grow a garden. You could, too. Upside down tulips. Subscribe today. <laughs> if you're already subscribed, tell a friend. Especially if you have one that looks peaked. We're rolling. <laughs> I love how you say, you want to start? You start. No, you start. So I'm all ready to start. And, and then, then you I started. Said, We're rolling. <laughs> We're rolling. <laughs> I like to mess with you. That's good. You know what? I keep, you keep me on my toes. Well, you start right now. Go ahead. You okay. start. Ready? Go. Boy, it's been cold out. Yes, very, very cold today. Oh, yeah. There's still snow on the ground everywhere in my backyard where there's no sun, where there's shade. From. Uh-huh. There's all the snow. I, it, I've been trying to get out to do some walks, and I haven't been able to because it's been too cold. Yeah, it's been really cold. I even wore hard pants today. Hard pants? Yeah. I'm, <gasps> oh, oh. Normally, because of COVID, I've just been wearing a lot of yoga pants and okay. leggings. Yeah. But I put on real jeans today because it was cold. I'm just glad you're wearing pants since we're doing a podcast. So <laughs> right. you look great. And yet you are not wearing pants. You weren't supposed to tell people. Why <laughs> would you why that's even? Happening, but Christy, yesterday I answered a scam call. <gasps> now, you know, you know it's going to be a scam because it says unknown uh -huh. or it says it's a number that you don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what got into me, but I did. I answered this call. And I had heard about this scam. So this man says, your social security number has been used. Again, you probably don't even know about this, he said. It has been used in southern Texas on the border. And it is involved with dr the drug trade and child trafficking. Oh, my goodness. I mean, he was making it as horrible as he could. And I knew it was a scam, so I was very supportive. I went, oh, I'd go, oh, oh no. You're terrible, Edith. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I almost said, oh, my gourd. But then I thought that might give it away. So so then he said, um, so uh, I, need to verify, I need to verify your name. And I said, okay, June O'Halloran. He goes, can you spell that? And I told him. And then he said, and I need your social security number. Oh, clever. And I said, do you think I'm an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he said, yes, I think you're an idiot. <gasps> and I said, I am not an idiot. And he said, you're a mother <gasps> And I said, and I was actually kind of laughing. I go, you're a mother <laughs> Several things about that story. Uh, are you really supposed to ever call women that particular curse word? Isn't that a male sort of Oedipus thing? I think it to goes do? to a lot of other ways. So I guess. But anyway, everybody, like we've been told a million times, never give out your social security number right. to anyone. And you know, if you're home and you're bored, have fun with them. There's only one thing I'm kind of afraid of. Well. If by kind of afraid, you mean terrified. Uh -huh. And that is mice and squirrels in my house. So here's what I actually, it's actually, believe it or not, the second time that I have a squirrel in my house. The first time was a few years ago. And a squirrel on my porch, I have a window with a screen. It was summertime. He gnawed his way through the screen and I had the window open. He came into my house. I ran over to my neighbor, Stephanie's. Stephanie is, she is a badass man. She came over with her daughter, Olivia, with a baseball bat and a four-foot picture cut out of Elvis. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Like, what does she have to, to scare the squirrel with? Yes. Yes, exactly. What? So she's got this baseball bat. Well, by the time we got back to my house, the squirrel had chewed his way out the other window. So uh -huh. he destroyed two screens on his way uh -huh. out. 
So we put the Elvis cutout in the window, and that is the last time because, you know, Elvis's eyes, you know, they're so smoldery and they scared the squirrels away. So this is what happened this time. That was like years ago. <laughs> okay, I keep okay. going. I'm, mis- okay. I'm with you. <laughs> so I, I have, a, this was last Friday, and I had a work Zoom meeting. Mm-hmm. And 30 minutes before, I was getting my notes together. And from my point of view, I could see my picture window, and I saw the blind kind of fall. Like, really, like, and make this clickly clickety noise. And I'm like, well, wow, okay, I've been living here a while, but I didn't know that it just rot. I figured it rotted away. I don't uh-huh. know why. And you were focused on getting and ready for And I was focused on getting yeah. ready for this meeting. So then I hear chittering. I hear, <laughs> like that, like angry <laughs> chittering. And I look over. And in my, my picture window, there's a piano right there. Yes. The squirrel is on the piano, and he's raking the blinds, shrieking and raking the blinds. Well, I ran back over to Stephanie, my neighbor's house, because she's such a badass. She's so fearless. And I Baseball think, oh, bat, Elvis painting. Well, you know what it was this time that she, she brought, she's mellowed. She brought a have a heart trap. I have oh. a heart. So she goes, okay, we're going to set this up right here by the piano. Mm-hmm. And then I said, I have a Zoom meeting. So she left. I'm on the Zoom meeting. And the squirrel is having a circus. He is, I'm not kidding. The people on my Zoom meeting heard the squirrel. Wow. And I, I, how do you concentrate? I was supposed to be running the meeting. Oh, no. Yeah. And I was just watching that squirrel. Finally, James, who was one of the people on the meeting, said, get a piece of bread, put some peanut butter on it, and put it on your porch, leave the door open. And I thought, either that's going to work, or it's going to bring the whole family of squirrels. (laughs) Party at Edith's house. There's peanut butter. (laughs) There's a piano. That's right. (laughs) They start singing songs. Well... It worked. Thank goodness. Oh. At this point, it was dark, and I never saw it leave. But it got quiet. The chittering stopped. And I realized, Christy, he had been in my house <gasps> overnight. He'd been in there overnight. There was squirrel poop oh, all no. over. <gasps> so he was really wanting to get out of your house. He was, he was probably as scared, if not more scared, oh. than me. Yeah, but that chittering noise sounds really creepy. Oh, that creep. And and the noise of scratching on the blinds. Oh, it sounds like a horror story. It kind of was, you know, it was like a buzzsaw. Can I I say this? Because I I can't be the only one here, Edith, though. Is that, can we go back to the Elvis picture for just one second? (laughs) Because I just don't, there was thought behind this that, uh, because I understand the baseball bat, but why in heaven's name did... Is it El- she, she's genius. I don't know. It worked. She said, put Elvis in your window. It's a picture of him from the chest up, and it's four feet high, black and white. And he's got that smoldering look. Yeah. You know, that that ring of fire. And that works. Does it work? It works on squirrels? Worked on my squirrels. Well, yeah. that is that is a new one for me. Oh, phew. It's also a great time of year to cut back your ornamental grasses. I don't know anything about ornamental grass. I'm going to be quiet for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's because, uh, folks, Edith does not have any ornamental grasses in her yard because she does not care for them. Uh-uh, I don't. I like things that I can, that are either flower or that I can eat. Well, technically, an ornamental grass does have a flower. Okay, I didn't mean technically. I didn't mean I have to do a private investigation <laughs> yeah. to find the flower, but sure. Yeah, they have all those beautiful fronds that they make. Fronds well, are not flowers. I leave my ornamental grasses up during the winter for winter interest because I think they're pretty. Winter they, interest, I love that. And they also provide a great sanctuary for uh, bugs. Mice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just off it, aren't you? <laughs> well, uh, you know, now's a great time to cut those back. And you can cut those back to a couple inches. You're kidding. All the way down to a couple inches? Yeah. They'll come back okay. when they're ready. And the trick I like to use, especially if you have any big 
ornamental grasses uh-huh. is I like to take a bungee cord and then wrap it around really tight yeah. so you can get the whole ornamental grass in there. Yeah. And then I take a hoary knife, which is, if you remember this from our tools yes. episode, it's my favorite tool. Before I had my hoary knife, this is kind of sacrilege, I used to take a bread knife. Oh, wow. And just saw at it. And of course, the um, the grasses are great to put in the compost pile because birds make nests out of it. Mm. Oh, that is so cool. So it's a, a lot of good reasons to have ornamental grasses. That's also how I cut They're my hair. That's how you cut your hair with a mm-hmm. bungee cord and a, and a, and yes. a bread knife? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh. It's also a great time to weed. I saw weeds in my garden. I oh, did, oh, yeah, me too. Oh, little, and this is the time to get them out when they're little and when the soil yeah. is moist. I've got that weeder that you gave me. I'm really excited to oh, try it this year to really get oh, in there and pop those. That's a great weeder. Yeah, weeding is so enjoyable. It is. when, it, when the, cause In the spring, because the ground is really... Um, well, it's, it's uh, what do you call it? Frizzable. Is that what you call yeah. it? Yeah. It, it is frizzable. It's frizz. I can't believe I used that word correctly. I have no idea. I was just trying to be nice. Oh, so. you're... <laughs> Okay, we'll look it up, Minnesota nice. (laughs) It is still National Garden Month. Christy, could I say something here? Mm -hmm. So do you know that National Garden Month is shared with 54 other things that share this month? I'm not surprised. I looked it up. Can I tell you some of them? Yeah, I would love to hear them. It's also Alcohol Awareness Month. Good idea. For those of us that are not aware of the wonderfulness of alcohol. <laughs> Hello, alcohol. <laughs> Especially since <laughs> quarantine. There's, it's also Irritable Bowel Syndrome Awareness Month. Oh, yes. Now, see, that's important. It is. We should bring awareness to that. And I'm aware of it now. Uh, get this. It is National Fresh Celery Month. Celery had the whole month of you March. You have got to be kidding me. I am me. not kidding. It's you number know, 27 on the list. Celery must have some amazing lobbyists. I swear to God. Yeah. And fre- I guess last month was old celery, you know, when it gets like rubbery and bendy. I have that in my refrigerator right now. Well, it's not. It's month. Okay. That was last <laughs> month. It's also, get this, National Straw Hat Month. A straw hat gets a whole month. You know. Maybe an afternoon would suffice, but yeah, no. A whole a month, month for a straw hat. And for sure, it is also, it is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. That's important. That is very important. And that is what we share with Garden Month. Well, can I tell you this, Edith? Please tell me. Is that on the 14th is National Garden Day. Okay. And on the 16th, it's... Orchid Day. Uh huh. <laughs> On the seventeenth, it's National Bat Appreciation Day. Ah, as and in baseball or flying the flying bat. Yes. Okay. Good to clarify that. Thank you. You're and welcome. On the nineteenth, it's National Garlic Day. Okay. Okay, very good. So I now mean, we feel up to date on all that. We do, and I'm going to get my celebrations and parties all scheduled. All out. the cards we have to send Car- out. Oh my now. gosh, so much! Oh, I love sending out garlic day cards. I do too. I do too. Irritable bowel syndrome. Now that's a card that's hard to find. Yes, but I will look or make my own. And a party that's not that fun to go to. <laughs> So, so good. Now, you have an apple tree too, right? I have an apple tree in the front, yes. And to, uh, there's a lot of apple trees in Denver. The thing about it is it always is very, very wormy. So I cut around that part and I make enough applesauce for the winter. That's usually what I do with oh, my gotcha. apple tree. Or, you know, cut it up and use it for, I don't make pie, but some other thing I might make. Like apple brown Betty. I don't really make that. I just wanted to say it. <laughs> Apple Brown Betty. I love that. Hey, Edith. What, Christy? Do you know what the most popular spice in the world is? Is it baby? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so we like hot peppers. We're we're in Colorado. We like hot peppers. Yeah, I like things spicy. So um, Maybe not orange bonnet spicy. 
Okay, that is really spicy, but, but I, like, that, I like a kick. It's not as spicy as, for example, the Carolina, Carolina Reaper, which has a heat level of 2 to 2.2 million Schofield hit, heat units. So um, before I ask what's going on in your garden, I think we need to make a correction from last week. Okay. So this was, of course, my slip up of the tongue. There it goes again. You know, I said it was a Schofield heat measurement when we were talking about pucker butt peppers. Uh huh. It's not. Oh. It's Scoville. <laughs> it's the heat measurement. Is it possible, Edith, that you were thinking of the great actor Paul Schofield? Who is from yes, a man for all seasons. Who's so hot? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is he dead? Or I? I bet he is passed oh, away. But he, he's still hot. Yeah. He's hot. The Oscar winner <laughs> of Man for All Seasons. That right? must have been what it was. Yeah. Yes. So. All right. Tomatoes. A lot of anticipation for the year. Who knows what they will be like when we talk about them in August. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. That's just something to look forward to. You know, I wish we could grow bacon. Well, I guess we can. We could grow pigs. If we were zoned <laughs> for it. <laughs> I've been doing the Bokashi experiment. Now, what that is, folks, is I'm trying to make compost by putting one bucket inside of another bucket. In the first bucket, there are holes so that the liquid can drain out into the second bucket, right? And it's supposed to be anaerobic, which means no oxygen, so the whole thing speeds up the process. So, And what's unique about this composting process is that you can use meat, I'm so glad you said that. I'm so Because glad. in your outside compost pile, you should never use meat. Never. Well, here's what happened to me. As you know, I did put meat in it. So I asked my daughter, Greta, to help me because she's really strong. And she gets the first bucket. And I have a, like, a, what do you call it? Like a plastic thing. What is it? A thing that you... A plastic hold. bin, a tub. A bin, a tub. <laughs> yes. Oh. So there's a plastic tub all waiting and she picks up the inside bucket and she puts it in the, and all this water drains out. And she says, mom, the water's moving. And I go, honey, that's just because we just disturbed it. And she goes, no, the water is moving. Christy, yeah. there were thousands of maggots. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Worse. No. Worse than maggots, there were pupa. There were thousands of pupa, which looked like little tiny cigars. The smell, you know how they talk about bad smells, could have knocked a buzzard off of a <laughs> wagon. It was so, so bad. Gretchen lost it. She goes oh, running no. into the house. Oh, no. Oh, no. Somehow, one fly had gotten in there. Because I hadn't, I guess, pounded it down hard enough. All you need is one fly. You just need one fly. And that was so friggin' gross. That's what happened to Jeff Goldblum in the movie The Fly when he was doing the transportation and the fly got in the time travel machine and that's how he turned into the fly. You just need one little fly. Oh, I did not even know that. <laughs> nice association, Christy. So that was the grossness that happened to me. What did and you that, do with all the maggots? I drowned them. Oh, okay. I tried to drown them and the pupa. And then... Um, Just after, in case people needed to know. Yeah. Like we try to give handy tips and tricks, Edith. And who knows when somebody might need to know that tip. <laughs> you know why I'm saying this, though, is be prepared for... Like you say, gardening is not for the squeamish. Things are going to happen. You're going to bring insects inside... Worms, all those things, Bugs. slugs. Yeah, just don't be squeamish. You know, it's going to happen. So that is my story. Did Gretchen survive? She did. She did. She stopped gagging like forty-eight hours later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and another front, um, I wanted to ask you how was your uh, sneak zucchini on the porch day? <laughs> because <laughs> folks, that was such a fun day, folks. I got to tell you that. Um, so August eighth was sneak zucchini on your neighbor's porch day and um of course i don't have any zucchini this year because of a lot of failed attempts to grow zucchini so but i have yellow summer squash which i think is pretty close uh -huh. so i was going around the neighborhood sneaking some on people's porches because i i get about two 
yellow summer squash a day. I and, have so yeah. many plants. And because she is determined to observe every single holiday. <laughs> that one's fun. It's a fun one. <laughs> so <laughs> Edith lives just three blocks away from me. So I thought, so I walked over and I was going up on her porch um, to sneak some in. And before I even got to her front step, what happens? I saw you. You saw me. I saw you through the window. <laughs> and you went, hi, Christy. And I went, dang. Yep. Shoot. So went in, had a nice chat, got to see your son and your daughter-in-law. And that uh-huh. was really, that was really exciting and nice to see them. And then I went on my way to keep, you know, Getting, delivering, uh, mm-hmm. delivering, sneaking yellow squash on people's porches. And then I made my way home. And folks, what was on my doorstep <laughs> when I got back? But two zucchini <laughs> from Edith. You know what's amazing? <laughs> now, when you came over, you'll verify this. My daughter-in-law was going through Braxton Hicks. Yes. Because she's expecting a baby tomorrow. So even with all that excitement going on, their first child, when you left, my son Chris goes, you know what would be really funny? <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. It was great. <laughs> So that's why I did it, because I thought, that is hilarious. You know what's really cool about um, where we are in life now is that so many of our friends are gardening, you know? Um, so, and, and we share stories. So I this happened to me this week. You know how when you're talking to somebody and they start looking extremely confused, like really, really confused, and you think, oh, they're just not coming in on all cylinders, you know. So you'd like talk slower or whatever. Listen to <laughs> it, Are you trying to tell me that's how you have to talk to me? <laughs> no, no. This is what okay, happened. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is what happened. So my neighbor, Stephanie, we were talking and she goes, you have to look at my garden. It is ravaged. And I went over and sure enough, things were ripped open and awful. Well, I was telling the story to my friends, Tim and Michelle, and I said, it couldn't have been a squirrel. I'm telling you that acorn squash was ripped open. Beavers, I (gasps) said. Beavers Beavers? were in their garden and they started to look confused like you do now. Yes. And Tim goes, beavers? And Michelle goes, I've never even seen a beaver. I go, yes, beavers. It was too much for just a squirrel. And then Tim goes, do you mean raccoons? (laughs) (laughs) So, and by that time, Christy, I'd been talking really slowly, you know, like beavers. And then I realized, like, I'm the one who is a burger short of a happy meal. (laughs) You know, or they say maybe, Edith, you're a couple plants short of a flat. (laughs) <laughs> a couple of plants. I like that. Yep. A couple of plants short of a flat. Oh, my goodness. I called one of my credit card companies, right? And before they would give me the information I needed, they said, we need to know your secret word. Have people been doing that to you? Do you have to give a secret word? Yes. Well, I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. And she said, yes, to get the card you had to have a secret word. I go, well, I don't know. I don't remember. She goes, okay. The question was, what is your favorite hobby? And I said, oh, easy. Gardening. And she went, nope. Oh. <laughs> I go. You do not know who you are, Edith. I know. I go, oh, okay. Um, reading. She goes, nope. It starts with a G, she said. And I'm like, I don't golf. I Google a lot. And she's like, no, no. I said, grocery shopping. (laughs) I go, this is crazy. I don't know what I said then, but my favorite thing to do is to garden. And she goes, there it is. Oh, geez. Yeah. I said, you mean garden, but not gardening? She goes, yep. (laughs) Wow. Isn't that funny? That's, uh, you know, that's a very, you know, I guess you got to appreciate how specific they are. I guess you do. But man, that's persnickety. That is very pers. That's a great word. That's exactly what it is. Very persnickety. <laughs> Has 2020 made you feel like you've been rode hard and put to bed wet? Do you think you're going crazy? Are your days full of stress and your nights full of scary pandemic dreams? 
may we suggest growing something? You can grow something almost anywhere. On a windowsill, a porch, a balcony, a community garden, even on the roof. Become a gardener. You'll be able to say things like, think the rain will hurt the rhubarb, completely unironically. You'll learn that rutabaga is not just what actors say in a crowd scene. Rutabagas are things you grow. Pass the time. The long, long times. It's only August. With the speedy radish and the slow-growing carrot. Water it, feed it, love it, then eat it. Or smoke it, we don't judge. Remember, in these tough times, bookmark your sanity. Grow something. Brought to you by the neighbors who hear you screaming in the night. You know, when we're doing research, sometimes you run into things that you don't expect to. And there's a lot of gardening forums online. Uh huh. So I look. I was looking at this one, and um, this this person named Red Dog, that's their handle, <laughs> is trying to find out what this plant is. And he posted, he, she posted, there's one that has no flowers and it has white stuff that rubs off. What's it called? And then someone named Blue Umbrella answered by saying, that's called a man. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> no flowers and it has white stuff that rubs off. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> we better wrap it up, Edith. Yes, let's wrap it up, really. It's time for mailbag. Ring, ring. Christy, we have a letter this week. From Anne from Pennsylvania. You ready? Yes. Okay. Years ago, our daughter had guinea pigs. She used flannel cage covers, and whenever the cage got full of pellets, I'd have her take the flannel cover right out to the compost pile and dump the effluvia there. I love that word. It's a great word. Effluvia. I figured, guinea pigs basically compost veggies into pellets, right? And the stuff's organic. In fact... I can attest that guinea pig cage cleanings enhanced my compost pile and my garden soil. Well, my daughter's moved away long since, and the piggies have gone to that big Timothy hayfield in the sky. (laughs) But lately, I have wondered about another compost enhancement from the butts of herbivores. (laughs) Deer scat. Can can you use deer poop as a compost enhancer for your vegetable garden? Mm. That is my question. They eat mostly grass and shrubs and berries. And my perennials, they are Mm. like cows, ruminants. And cow patties are good for the garden, right? Mm. I find piles of deer pellets all over my yard. It would be easy enough to scoop them up on a shovel and heave them Mm -hmm. into the composter. Thoughts, answers, ideas? Hmm. Well, I did do some research on this. Look at you go, Edith. Well, you know, I love research. Uh, so, as, as in so many things in gardening, there are two sometimes opposing points of view. Uh-huh. I think it depends on how, oh, finicky or anal retentive or whatever you are. Especially when it comes to compost. I have said it before. I love compost composting myself uh-huh. and i appreciate composters but there are some composters out there edith yes there are that are very persnickety and there are some people who see oh my gosh e coli it could be e coli mm. you know and you hear about california with the lettuce and how did the e coli get there and it comes from some things scat so mm-hmm. that's why i did research and i kind of delved into it a little deeper to see which side i'm on Okay. Right, because I'm not only interested in about the deer scat, but also cow. Cow, horse, all of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what I read was, E. coli has been discovered in the manure of, just like you said, cows, sheep, dogs, horses, birds, oh, and deer. deer. If compost is managed properly, however, the risks to deer manure can be mitigated. All of it can be mitigated, and the, the way you do that is you let the compost pile heat up. Which oh, is what yeah. we do anyway. You, yeah, if, if if I'm lucky, though, I don't know if my compost gets that hot. I'll just let it get old. Oh, know? okay. Oh, okay. Just, just, just let, and I'm just making that up, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Just let it get old. The thing is, you don't want to put it directly 
onto your garden. Everybody uh, knows correct. that, right? Yes. Not when it's fresh. And according to this, not so much even if you want to be super careful, not even if it's seasoned. So yes, I would take the deer scat on my shovel and I would put it into my compost because if it's good from a guinea pig, why wouldn't it be good from a deer? Right? If it's good for the goose, why is it good for the gander? Because the gander's so bossy. <laughs> so here's the other thing that I found out, and I thought this was really interesting. One, a couple of websites said that the best wild compost is bunny. Really? Bunny pellets. They fact, they call it, get this, bunny honey. <laughs> they call it bunny honey. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like that in your tea? No, thank you. But honey, you honey. could put it in your compost tea. Yes. Yes. There's a whole thing about making compost tea out of bunny honey. You're absolutely right. There are people that have rabbits and they simply clean out the the pellets because, you know, rabbit poop is, it looks so, doesn't smell. It's like these little, looks like little brown marbles. Yeah. Or little raisins. Little raisins. That's all it is. It's raisins, raisinets. I've also heard that bat guano is really good for the compost pile and your garden. Well, this is weird, but when I was on the road and I would stop at like truck stops, I heard that truckers, they, they, they made this kind of a speed out of bat guano. And really, really, and truckers would take it to stay awake. So I bought some once. <laughs> oh my God. I was driving from St. Louis to Denver without stopping. And by the time I hit like right west of the airport, I swear to you, I was seeing animals jumping across the highway. So apparently bat guano is good for a number of things. <laughs> what did it taste like? It was a pill. It was just a oh, pill. Oh, gotcha. Oh, my God. Do you really think that they were selling little pellets <laughs> of deer? <laughs> or if it was like, I was thinking of like the five-hour stuff, that no, little shot it, that you drink. It, was, you it know? was pill. It was pills. Okay. You know, <laughs> it was pills. And I tried it one time, and I don't know if it was sleep exa- lack of sleep or but whatever. How, how will it help my tomatoes? Yes. Who cares about me driving? How will it help my tomatoes? Yeah, so that's interesting about the bats. I'd not heard that. That's a great letter. Good letter, Anne. Thank you so much. Hello, it's magic time. It's time for inspiration. This quote is from Alan Armitage. He's a professor of horticulture at the University of Georgia, where he teaches, conducts research, and runs the horticultural gardens. Gardening simply does not allow one to be mentally old because too many hopes and dreams are yet to be realized. That's beautiful. It's a time of hope, isn't yeah. it, Edith? It's a ton of hope, you know. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't lead a horticulture, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Rachel Carson, who wrote The Silent Spring, right? Yeah. Uh, she has been inspiring me since I first read her read that book, and maybe she made me look at the whole world differently, and here's what she has to say. The more clearly we can focus our attention on the wonders and realities of the universe about us, the less taste we shall have for destruction. Rachel Carson. Wonderful. Isn't it? Yeah. Wonders and mysteries of the world of gardening. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah. Be part of, be part of the, the beauty, not the destruction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, everybody. General, thanks for listening. We are Edith... <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm sorry i'm reading right off the thing and I, I thank you everybody sincerely we are edith weiss and christy Montre larson who is giggling over there sorry friends if you got some laughs and some value from this week's episode could you do us a favor you could hit that subscribe like or follow button wherever you listen to your podcast and thanks to denise gentilini for composing and performing the upside down tulips theme song she has her very own uh, website and it's fantastic you can listen to more of her music there you can find that link on our upside down tulips.com website and a special thanks to our local nursery and friend of the show southwest gardens general thanks for listening <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget if you make a mistake your garden will forgive you a
upside down.